to you. Open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Father, release your watering unto your people. To the intent that, Lord, we will blossom into the fullness of your installed capacity in us. But we will not stand ashamed of our shoddiness in doing your will. Cause us to reassess ourselves and to judge as heaven judges. Cause us to know your dependence on us to do that which you have in mind for our generation. Thank you. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Spirit, thou art welcome in this place, omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place. Be seated. I repent for not knowing how it looks like to stand out here the way we are. Can you come forward a bit wherever you are? Can you move forward a bit? Hallelujah. Let's have a sense of togetherness. Come to the front seats a bit as close as you can. Hallelujah. There is an erroneous concept that we have about the end of times. The Bible says the wicked shall not stand in judgment. God's intention is not to judge the wicked. They are condemned already. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to speak about the wicked today, but I want us to understand that the wicked stand condemned already. They're not going to be judged for what they did or what they didn't do. By themselves, they have already assign themselves to some. But the fearful thing is that it's the righteous that will stand in judgment. Read your scriptures. It says the wicked shall, who knows where that one comes from? Incidentally, somewhat. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought everybody should know that one. Sorry, I'm not in the mood to preach and go away.
The Bible says there are already a vexation to God. We must understand that those who are living outside God, who reject God, are already a vexation. And there is a certain end to their lives, and that is destruction. Such terrible destruction that nobody would wish it for even his worst enemy. You know, the Bible speaks about that they were born in fire. In a place that burns with fire and brimstone. Some of us don't understand. And we are taking it lightly. Even your worst enemy, you wouldn't wish the person to pass through it. Brimstone is the old way of calling sulfur. One of the most terrible things you could have in the world. When it combines with water, it produces sulfuric acid. It combines with A, it produces hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide happens to smell like rotten egg. So hell is going to smell like rotten egg 24-7. And when it mixes with the water of that tears, that is why it says the wounds do not heal. It becomes sulfuric acid and cuts them up. Even the strongest of them would have come to the realization of the terror of God. 4 a.m. this morning as I was trying to pray about what we have today, I had assigned myself to speak on what I was asked to to speak, but in my usual way, I said to the Lord, would you want to tell me something? And he referred me to Amos 2.16. To be truthful, I didn't know where it was. Number one, I didn't know whether Amos 2 has up to 16 verses. But I was happy that when I opened up, I found out that 16 was the last verse of Amos 2. And it says this. And he that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day, said the Lord. I don't know the mighty man you can think of. You may think of the one that they call the, 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 the strongest man in the whole world. Who is that? The president of America. In the day of the Lord, he will run away naked. And God began to show me, if such a man runs away naked, what will happen to the rest of the people? And everything we see in the world right now is like a dress rehearsal of what will come. Some three days ago, no, today is Friday. Yes, three days ago, about Tuesday, I woke up in the morning and my wife couldn't get into the car and drive because our whole street was flooded. It was just a rain. We were lying down there. We came out with so fire brigade trying to pump water out of the place and it could have just wiped out the people in that place. Just like that. And I drove up and I, so I drove out of the street at the junction there. A full tree, big tree, I'm not talking about a shrub, has been uprooted. My wife in Ayesha always said, I don't know what tree is this that the Lord has uprooted it. All that came to my heart is that it's a dress rehearsal, that when God is good and ready, it could happen today. You know, since Tuesday, I've been kind of so bad. If you ask my daughter, she'll come and say to me, Daddy, why are you looking this way? I've been thinking, what if the flood wiped out the people in this street? Could I stand before the Lord to say, I've lived here for nearly three years. What did I do? How many of them do I even know by name? Every place we are planted, the Lord has carefully planted us there. <laughs> it says, even the courageous amongst them shall flee naked. And as the Lord gave me that portion and I began to think about it, it brought to my mind that I will stand in judgment. 
The day of the Lord is not a day of fun. It's going to be a day of terror. Second Corinthians 5. I told you something, I said, the wicked shall not stand in judgment. They are already an annoyance to God. That's what the scripture says. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says what? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All of us must appear. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. This was written to Christians, not heathen. Notice that the heathen have already been condemned. He will not stand in judgment. That's why the Bible says there is now therefore no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Which means to be outside Jesus, you are already condemned. But the freedom we have in Christ, of what use is it? That's why we stand in judgment because God, God is an astute businessman. He doesn't do anything without having an intention of maximally ripping from it. It is, it is a true strength. That's why he was giving us a parable and said to the other one, why did you go and hide my money or my talent and didn't use it? He's interested in gaining from that which he has invested. The greatest investment is the life of Christ and bringing us to himself. Verse 11 says, what happens when we go there? Verse 11 says what? Knowing therefore <laughs> the terror of the Lord. That's what Amos was talking about. The people that you see you call mighty that stand up and the whole world will listen to them will be so terrified they will run naked. I was thinking about when I was a lot younger. I, was, I went for holidays in my mom's village and and the armed robbers struck in the night. And this woman ran out of the night, the night, stark naked, left the child, the baby, and ran stark naked, came. We were using wrapper because we were too ashamed. We said, Madam, cover your He said, What's clothes? And forgot about himself. And I'm thinking, the day of the Lord is going to be like that. People are going to lose sight of clothes. Don't talk about styles and fashions and so on and so forth. The people we are discussing in X Factor and so on and so forth. And they're looking around like the glittery and they're being celebrated. And we forget about the doom that is awaiting them. They are going to be so debilitated that day that we will look at them and they said, you wicked one, you knew it. And you didn't tell me. And we will say, we thought you wouldn't listen. And they will say, why didn't you try it? See, some things that God has this, told us about is so fantastic because God is bringing us back to the, to the basics. A lot of people are in church for what we could get. That's not church. That's why God is explicit. He didn't leave us with any, any doubt of his intention. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's all. All the things we look for, children and so on and so forth. Our children should be better. This could happen. This should happen. God is saying unto us, this is not it. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. The fruit will abound. Is that we persuade men. I don't know how many people have given their lives to Christ and I would call them and they treat me as if I'm calling them to beg money. 
You don't understand what I'm saying. These are people that love will drive you to rise up in the night and say, I will call them and pray with them. And the desire is that none would be lost. Beloved, there must be an attitude of not only preaching to people, but following up even when they disdain you. Because we know the terror that is to come, we persuade men. Remembers, it, it, makes, it reminds me of the days that we gave, a, let, let me not say we, my parents gave their life to Christ. We grew up in a Catholic family. My father was a, a renowned choir master and so on, religious man and so on. Then he came and gave his life to Christ because he passed through so many things and God touched him and he gave his life to Christ. I remember those days in the morning. About 6 a.m., this woman would knock on her door. She was a nurse, renowned nurse in the place, and give all of us a bath so that my parents would have excuse that the children didn't have bath and wait to take all of us. It remained for her to give my father a bath. She would give all of us bath, dress us up, and make sure that she takes us to church. And I begin to think that now I understand she wanted the fruit to abound. That one soul, that one soul that she went after with it. If you don't know, one of the worst things is the spirit of religion. That comes to us in, in the setting that we came out from. It took that kind of passion to bring my father to the place of being totally taken over. He has never seen such love. That one soul must have won at least 10,000 souls before he died. And that fruit, whatever number of souls he has won, and he's still wearing because he has a multiplier effect. Those he won are still winning souls. They are reflected in that woman who was not a pastor. But that her fruit may abound. It's amazing how many of us will be Christians for 10 years, not one soul that has come to give our life to Christ and has a multiplier effect. We feel normal. We come to church. We take positions. We are ordained as deacons and graduate from deacons to pastors, from pastors to apostles, from apostles to, I don't want to mention, because there are those who are genuine. We, still, we seem to think that this is the standard of heaven. The Bible says, knowing the terror that is to come, we persuade men. We persuade men enough to lay down our garments and go after people, to seek after people. Hallelujah. Is the reason some of us stand where we are standing? Totally removing the toga of honor. Seeing that Jesus did the same thing. He became like man. That he might persuade men. Hallelujah. So much so that the thief on the cross with him said to him, If you are a son of God, can you imagine? So that people spat on him. So that people slapped him. And said, who, who slapped you? Can you imagine? Because he knew the terror that was to come. Beloved, we must have in our heart that there is a terror that is to come. And because of that terror, we persuade men. Men that you would greet and they say, mm-hmm. You find out men that maybe you came from a setting that some of us came from that wouldn't even qualify to do some things for you. And they treat you with this dead. I was telling somebody before, I said to I said to I said to the person, I said, this thing they are preaching today, to give ourselves to the study of the word and to the preaching. 
I said, I have tested where I came to, the place that I don't need to take my children to school. My children are chauffeur driven to school, and he came to a place the driver would wait at the school for them. That's his job. He doesn't do anything. That's not my personal driver. He would wait for the children at school and bring them back from school. That I might pray. I have a room in my house that if I enter there, if you like, be Pope. My children, nobody, none of my house servants will come and lock the door. Because I gave myself, and then you come to the place in London, you know what they said? They said, London is a leveler. And people really want to show you that it's a leveler. And you speak to men that otherwise wouldn't have spoken. They think that somehow you must be somebody who's on, but knowing the terror to come, we persuade men. We take it in our stride and persuade men. We must climb down from the high horse. That the fruit may abound. My greatest joy as I'm standing here now is to see Wendy sitting there. That the fruit may abound. On the morning, I had a choice of taking my child to the school that she had to go to. When they had to go to hospital, I abandoned my children and went there early in the morning to take her to the hospital. I sat in the car and waited for her until she was rolled into the theater. And you know the joy she had to me said, of all my sisters, my mother, nobody called except you that God sent to me. The price we have to pay. There are many others that don't even pick the phone anymore. And some of us that have not given up on them. I roll out in the night and cry. I call them. And the phone will say, press one if you want a message to be left. So you can't even leave a message. But knowing the terror to come. Even if it's that one person. And you know, the indication of the things that are possible is yesterday. I have said in church we're coming here. There are all members in church. Some came to me and said, my family is going on holidays. Fantastic. Thank God that the prayer we've been praying, God has multiplied us to the place of being able to afford that. But without expecting yesterday, when they called me and said, I will be ready for you to come and pick me. They were ready one and a half hours before my wife went and picked them. I pray for you that you will not suffer any loss. And you will not be discouraged when men are trying to act funny, you know? Remember that for bringing a man, he traveled all the way from wherever he lives to come to the place to visit the man, brought him to church. The guy walks into church, you know the guy has been there. I hope and pray that he will not give up on him. For one of these days he will stand. I don't like you, I men in the house. Yeah. Beloved, this is what I have passion about. I've gone past the place of dropping names. I've known men. I know men who are movers and shakers. Men who I could go around prophesying for them and I would live in luxury. But that's not what the kingdom is about. It's not in food. It's not in drink. The essence. John 15, 8, 16. Everyone knows that one. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Once I gave my life to Christ, who are you? 
Who he foreknew, he predestinated. Who he predestinated, he called. Who he called, he justified. Who he justified, he glorified. He has always been him. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I've chosen you. I gave my life to Christ. Wrong statement. He brought you to himself. He monitored you and begat you at the foundation of the earth, before the foundation of the earth. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He ordained us before we broke the matrices of our mothers. He monitored us. What could have killed us did not kill us. For one purpose, that we might bear fruit. Which means as many of us that are seated here, God considers us to be what? Prime seed. With a capacity to bear fruit despite the terrible land. <laughs> Which means there is no excuse to say, I did not bear fruit. That was the analysis of Jesus when he looked at the fig tree and he looked for it, he didn't say he see fruit. They said it was not season. Jesus said, What are you telling me about season? It's about bearing fruit in season and out of season. <laughs> 